Okay, so this is uh, part two on the best fit. So we're actually going to jump a bit more into the functionality. Uh, I've got basically what we had before, which is uh, the uh, one product set up with a large box. All of you know, the only change I've made is I've put a zip in, so we can actually see some prizes. Um, so what we're going to do there is mix it up and see the best fit in practice. Right. So, so yeah, it's just assigned to the to the one box. So what we do is put the other box in there. So there's two different packing boxes. So these are the dimensions of the product. And then let's just change this around. Okay, so now we can put it on either the small or the large. As, assuming it can fit, it's going to go for the smallest because that's the one that's most full, which is what it does. So what we want to see now is, well, when does it go over to the large box? So if we increase this value, there's going to be a crossover point when it switches over. So if we try four of them, is that still volumetrically in range? And it's saying that it is there. So we still get small. So let's try 10 and see what happens then. Okay, so what happens now is volumetrically it can't fit 10 of these items in the box. So it switches over to the large box. There's one thing that we should take a look at here, which is the box tolerance. Now... By default, this is set to 20 when you first install it, this, this best fit tolerance. And what this means is the white space that's left in a box. Because for many products, you may want this, this gap because you don't actually fill up the whole of the box. There's always a spare um, space there. Now, you can set this to whatever you want. I changed this to be zero. You can also set it on a product level as well. And if you do that, then it overrides it here. So that's a, that's a good one to know So if you want some space. But let's see what happens when we put another product um, in, in the cart. Let's configure up another one. Because you need it to work for that. You don't realistically always, you know, send one product in one box. So let's try something else. But with this product, then let's just make this so that it can only fit in the large box. So let's give it some dimensions again. And we're going to say, yep, this only goes in large. We'll take this back down to 1, so this is in the small box. Okay, so we're in the small, and then we'll add in the second product. Okay, so what you see now is that it's actually forcing it into the large box. Because what it's saying is, well, you've only given me the large box to use, and it's better for me to send out in the large rather than sending out in the large and the small box as two packages. So that's what it does there. So you can play around with that and obviously change the dimensions and you know it will it will keep moving things around and uh, you can put them both in that box and it will flick over as well. So I just want to show you a couple of other things that you can do. Um, with this item, I'm going to set this item so that it, this ships on its own. So we just set it to ship separately. I'm not going to specify any dimensions for this item, it's just weight based, that's how it works. So if we put this in the cart, what we should see happen is, is that it actually will um, push this into its own box. Okay, and that's what we see. So we've got one box here which has got no dimensions, uh, the £50, that's the, the bed in this scenario. And then we've got the other products and they go in this second box. Now you can also see this um, in the logs. So if we refresh the logs on this side then you can see the packages that it's going to send to the carrier. Um, and you can see here, it actually gives you this breakdown that you see on the front end um, in there. So we, and it's telling you everything you need to know about it. So you should definitely be looking at this when you're doing the testing. You know, you need to make sure that you have this configured correctly. And then when you've finished, you can just go in here and you switch the login off um, and switch it off here as well. And then what that will do is it will stop that from showing on the front end. So if we just refresh this page. Okay, so now you see it as it would look in production usage. So that's pretty much how the best fit works. Very simple to set up, um, requires some configuration and some thought, but you know you can quite quickly get up and running. And um, you don't need to do this on all your products. If you want to, you can set some of your products just to use weight. And what it would do if it's got weight and dimensions is that it's actually going to put them in two separate boxes. So you don't need to do it on every single product that you've got.